Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Radiographic Interpretation Made e Easy K7. I'm Dr. Lahari here. The steps in radiographic interpretation uh, would be uh, identifying the radiograph taken, normal anatomical landmarks, radiographic faults and tooth or teeth of interest uh, and then uh, specifically for the teeth of interest um, details regarding the crown, root, height of alveolar crest, periodontal ligament space, lamina dura, alveolar bone proper, radiographic diagnosis and then only arriving at the differential diagnosis. The radiograph uh, that Moving we are discussing today is uh, of the fourth quadrant and uh, the teeth seen are the 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, and the 4-6. The normal anatomical landmarks, if you pay attention, you will see some uh, diffuse radiolucency here. And that would be the, um, uh, the, the pointed with the yellow uh, outline. And you will also see something which is uh, like a faint shadow here. So uh, a linear faint shadow. So this would be the mental foramen and the uh, faint uh, shadow pointed in red uh, which moving is on, the uh, there are not canal. many radiographic faults in this radiograph nothing in particular that is visible and the tooth of interest uh, that we have identified would uh, be a uh, four five so coming to the crown of the tooth uh, what is evidently visible is that uh, uh, in this area we see that uh, there is uh, radio opacity as well as radiolucency so, so we ha can see a well-defined radio opacity on the distal aspect of the crown involving enamel, dentine and pulp and uh, which is of comparable density to a tooth colored restoration. Now uh, interestingly below the restoration we see a well demarcated radiolucent rim uh, and which is also involving dentine and pulp and which is suggestive of secondary caries. The When you're looking at the roots uh, it is important to note that not only the tooth of interest but the adjacent tooth also showing some interesting findings. So uh, the root per se of 4-5 which is our tooth of interest looks normal whereas when you come to 4-4 you see something very interesting at the uh, in the roots of 4-4. Uh, particularly pay attention you will see that there is the outline of a bifid uh, root and if you look closer you will also see the third root and hence you are looking at a trifid root and uh, also with that you will see the outline of the pulp chamber which is uh, um, you know entering in, uh, in the can canal also being uh, a trifid and you can see the trifurcation very clearly in the apical one third of the root especially. Uh, moving on to the height of the alveolar crest, uh, what we see here is uh, this is the area of uh, interest of the height of alveolar crest since our tooth of interest is 4-5. So our, um, uh, we're going to revolve around 4-5 now. And if that was the identified the green line as the height of alveolar crest, what you notice is that um, if the orange line is indicating your CEJ and an average root length of a first uh, mandibular premolar is around 14 mm then uh, um, what we need to note down here is that the uh, loss of bone is about uh, 3 mm and uh, hence the height of alveolar crest is around 3 mm below the CEJ for your tooth of interest. Moving on to periodontal ligament space and lamina dura now uh, is glaringly visible that there is a periapical radiolucency here in this tooth so now it's interesting to note that the PDL and the lamina dura uh, are not continuous so if you pay attention to the um, orange arrow here it points out to the black line which indicates the PDL and when you go ahead you see that you cannot demarcate the PDL anymore at the apical one third of the root uh, and then the yellow line is in indicates the lamina dura which is fairly thickened in uh, the middle third uh, portion of the root but as it reaches the apical one third somehow you cannot see it anymore. So there is a discontinuity in lamina dura and PDL and, uh, and virtually almost loss of lamina dura and PDL towards the uh, end uh, apical one third of the uh, root. 
uh, for the alveolar bone proper what is interesting to note is uh, if you've paid attention to the radiolucency it's fairly irregular and that's why we're using the term ill-defined and in its greatest dimension the uh, the diameter is around 1 cm in size uh, comparable again to considering that our known value is the uh, root length and the crown length and if we've considered the root length to be about uh, uh, 14 mm then uh, this would be around 10 mm or equivalent to 1 centimeter so uh, that leads us to the diagnosis that this radiolucency and the caries put together we've come to a diagnosis of 4 5 having deep secondary caries with chronic periapical abscess the differential diagnosis would be uh, rarefying ostitis or a periapical cemental dysplasia rarefying ostitis is generally associated with the periapical uh, disease in a decayed tooth very similar to that of an abscess appearance being very similar etiology also being very similar is purely a radiology term and uh, periapical cemental dysplasia the tooth is generally vital and hence this would be differentiated once we know that there is caries and the tooth is uh, non-vital so the clinical application of this radiograph would be that it would assist us in treatment planning and hence based on the appearance you know that the tooth requires a root canal treatment so that's it from now thank you very much you can uh, send me your feedback or uh, doubts that you have at my email address thank you once again